Hey everyone, Caleb the Antique Book Collective, and today I'm getting to you guys with some more information on bookworms. So bookworms, if you guys don't know, uh, they are actually a kind of insect or sometimes larva or something like that that will burrow into your books. They aren't necessarily like actual worms, which is, for me, I think something that's nice because worms are slimy, worms are gross. To think that is getting in your paper, that's nasty. An actual larva, still nasty. I don't think it's quite as nasty, though. Uh, if you guys would like to learn more about bookworms, I'm going to have a uh, link to a playlist on bookworms uh, right there at the end of the video. I'm going to have a link right there as well for you guys to check out if you guys would like to learn more about it. But uh, long story short, that's what bookworms are. There's a lot of stuff that you guys can do about them. Uh, but this video is specifically about seven ways uh, to prevent bookworms from infesting your books, murdering all your books, and eating your books. So with that said though, before I dive into the countdown, I just wanted to say that bookworms, I know you might think that they are a really prevalent thing and they're really bad, but uh, from my experience and from the experience of others, uh, you don't normally get bookworms like uh, this little bookworm damage here or this little hole right here. You don't normally get bookworms in newer books. Bookworms are not that big of an issue nowadays. Most of the bookworm damage that you're going to come across is going to be in older books, particularly ones from the 1800s and older. Uh, ones newer than that generally are uh, not going to have as many bookworms. There's a lot of theories on why that is. Um, I don't really have a theory because I don't know because I've only had three books over all my years of book selling that have had bookworm damage. But with all that said though, I'm just going to dive right on into the uh, countdown. This countdown isn't really in a particular order. It sort of is, but it's sort of not. But uh, there are a lot of things that you guys can do. This is just seven of the things that you can do. So the first thing that you can do that I highly, highly, highly recommend is just keep your books off of the ground. Uh, the ground, guys, it's like the worst thing you can possibly do for a book because not only on the ground, uh, not only can bugs climb onto it and spiders climb into it. I hate finding a spider in, book, it, in a book. It's just terrible. It's an unnecessary surprise. But uh, besides just having bugs getting on your books, there's also the entire issue about uh, leaks in your house. I know that leaking in your house isn't the most common thing, but it does happen. And because it happens, having your books on the ground is probably the worst place to have them because they're going to be the first things to get wet usually. Um, of course, if the leak is coming from the sky, sorry, from the, from the ceiling, not the sky, obviously the sky makes water. Uh, but uh, if the leak is coming from the sky, yes, it's going to get onto your bookshelf. So your books aren't necessarily 100% safe there, but they're going to be safer on a bookshelf than they are on the ground. So uh, besides the whole moisture thing, again, you have the entire thing about bugs. Bugs, it's a lot easier for them to walk on the ground and get into your book than it is for them to climb up a bookshelf. Yeah, a bookshelf isn't the biggest. Uh, in it doesn't impede them entirely, but it is a good line of defense. So with that said, on to the next thing. Uh, so the second thing is don't put any, I call them infected books, uh, with all of your normal books, your good books. So by that, I mean, if you know that a book has uh, like active bookworms in it eating the book, don't put that next to all your other books, especially don't put it next to your nice books. Like, be sure to treat those bookworms as soon as you can. Make it so they don't get into your other books because bookworms, they will spread. Uh, it, they don't spread as much anymore, as I said earlier, because older books have them. You don't really have them as much anymore because of how things have changed. But uh, if a book has a lot of bookworms in it, if you put it with your other books, those bookworms can and will spread to those other books. Uh, of course, as I said, I, I, I'm really making sure to drive this point home. It doesn't happen very often anymore, so it's not guaranteed to be a giant risk for you, but it is potentially a risk for you. So with that said, though, keep your books separated if you know that they have bookworms in them. Personally, I would say treat it as quick as you can to get rid of those bookworms because those bookworms are just going to keep on munching away on your book, eating your book, damaging your book. So with that said, on to the next thing. Thing. So next thing, number three, is keep your air and your books dry. So you want to keep your books and the air around your books as dry as you can because water damage, uh, not only does it make your book look ugly, but water damage and moisture in general actually attracts bugs. So water damage itself, when a book gets wet, it's going to have all the fungus and mold that is naturally on most books. It's going to have all of that stuff get a nice wetter environment for those molds and fungi to grow. And there are a lot of insects that like eating the molds and fungi out of books. So by preventing the mold and fungi from really taking off by keeping your books dry, you're not giving as many bugs stuff to eat inside of your books. Besides that, 
bugs, aka bookworms, they need to have more humid environments. So humidity, uh, you're supposed to, according to, I believe it's the EPA, you're supposed to keep your home's humidity basically between 50 and 30% uh, percent humidity. So it's on the drier end. Uh, some people say as low as like, as I said, 30 already, and as high as like 55. Some people say 65, but uh, the EPA, sorry, EPA uh, did put out some numbers for that. You guys can check that out yourself, but uh, they recommend keeping it around that uh, level of humidity. The reason for that is because of all the different things that can happen if you have too much humidity. One of those things, if you have too much humidity, is you have a lot more bugs. More bugs means more bookworms, potentially, that will damage your books. In addition to that, if the humidity is high enough, it will cause your books themselves to warp. Uh, like, I've actually seen some books that like the leather covers and whatnot will actually warp not because they got wet but just because the humidity and the high temperatures that they are exposed to so that is something that you guys want to keep in mind is the humidity in your room uh it's pretty easy to monitor your own humidity like you can literally buy do i have it right here i had one just oh here it is uh you can buy a little humidity sensor like this on amazon for like three dollars is what i paid for this one i think it's a little bit higher now because of inflation but um you can buy a humidity sensor pretty easy cheesy i've had this one for a little while you could just put it on your bookshelf and just like look at it every now and then this one it literally tells you the humidity level my humidity is a little high right now uh I do need to take care of that probably, but uh, mine is only 57% right now. It's not too terribly high. The level that you normally will find a whole lot of bug issues is once you get past like 70% humidity. Uh, once you get to like 5 million percent humidity, you're probably dead because that's impossible. So with that said though, guys, uh, be sure to keep an eye on your humidity. High humidity makes bugs happy. Happy bugs eat books. You don't want that. So on to the next thing though, uh, number four. So the next thing to get rid of uh, bookworms and prevent bookworm damage is to get rid of clean and monitor your uh, damaged books. So damaged books, as I mentioned earlier, are ones that will have uh, bookworm holes in them and or will have water damage. So uh, damaged books, uh, they are more likely to cause damage to your other books. So in the case of this one here, this book on Abraham Lincoln, this one is from uh, 1865. And as you can clearly see, it has a lot of water damage. Books that have water damage will have mold issues. Mold, once you get a little bit, it does like to spread. You can kill the mold, but you can't completely get rid of it forever. So you do need to monitor these things to make sure that the molds and fungi do not spread to your other books. That is one of the issues. But the next issue, obviously, is bookworms themselves. And bookworms, as I said earlier, they will spread from one book to another book. Uh, and uh, that is definitely not something that you want to have. Like, imagine having a bookshelf of your favorite books and going to it one day and finding out all your books are hollow because they were eaten alive. You, no one wants to have that. So be sure to constantly monitor books that are damaged. And in addition to that, I'll say this in another point though, be sure to monitor your books that aren't damaged as well, just to keep an eye on things, just to make sure that you're staying on top of stuff. So with that said, on to the next one, number five, and that is monitor your books always. As I said, I was gonna reference that. And guys, it doesn't matter if your books look beautiful or bad, be sure to monitor them every now and then. Books are a big investment. I mean, this little set right here, those um, plus these two, that set's worth $400. That's a lot of money to put into a set of books just to have them get eaten. So you want to monitor your books at all times. I mean, even newer books, those are worth a good chunk of money. And yeah, I know some people will go thrift shopping and get some books for like pennies on the dollar. And yeah, that's not as big of an investment, but it still is devastating to see your favorite books get eaten away and damaged by book, bookworms, bugs, and all the other sort of stuff that you will have damage your books so be sure to monitor your books all the time like that doesn't mean that you have to like spend seven hours a day looking at every single book to be sure just check in on it once every few months if nothing else so that's something you guys can definitely do and should definitely do so with that said on to the next thing number six keep food away from your books so uh there's a reason why libraries say don't have food in the library one of those reasons obviously is because people like will spill an entire grape juice box inside of a book and ruin the book and it's like why were you drinking grape juice my dude like what uh that is something that can happen but another reason though is once you have food around your books and stuff like that around your books there are going to be critters that are like do you smell that that smells like food and they're going to go over start eating the food and then they're going to be like well now i'm hungry 
what looks like food oh this book over here looks like food and a lot of books especially antique ones they're going to have leather covers leather tastes an awful lot like food to a bug and i mean there's people that eat leather as well and some people if they're bad enough cooks they probably would rather eat love leather than their own cooking so i mean that's something as well so that's something that you guys need to keep in mind though you don't want to have uh, food around your book books because that will attract not only bugs and other pests but also like rodents and stuff like that and i have had so many books so many books guys like as I said in the very beginning of this, I've had three books that I've come across that have bookworm damage. You know how many books I've come across that have rat damage and mouse damage? So many more. So many more. And not only that, but you have books, like some of them you can take away from. It's like, oh, oh man, oh, I'm, I'm dying because there's so much ammonia because of rat pee, mouse pee, all that sort of stuff. I actually bought a boatload of books. Um, I've mentioned this set of books uh, that I bought actually several times now. An estate sale that I went to bought over a thousand books. It was so many books. I still haven't gotten through listing them all, but I went to this place and it reeked of rat pee, mouse pee. It was terrible. I had to spend quite a, f quite a while getting rid of the odor in these books themselves. And these books were not directly damaged by the actual uh, mouse pee and rat pee. They were just in the same room as all the gross stuff that had happened. So they smelled. And now I've gotten rid of the smell. I'll go through that in another video for you guys. Uh, pro tip though, baking soda, uh, apple cider vinegar, and uh, ozone. So ozone, it's a little bit dangerous, but everything's dangerous if you do it wrong. But ozone, I find, is like one of my favorite ways to treat it. But apple cider vinegar, it's just great to have in general because it like takes care of everything. And uh, baking soda as well takes care of everything. So those are all great things to have that can all get rid of odors. I'll go over that in another video. That's not for this video. But those are some things, just pro tips of what you can do to get rid of odors in your books. But um, Something that you will have, though, some books will literally have pee on them. You don't really want to have a book that has pee on it. You don't want to smell a book that has pee on it. So those are some things that you definitely want to keep track of because food doesn't mix with books, guys. Just just don't do it. You don't want to attract the stuff that loves food and books. It, the worst thing ever. Unless, of course, if they're your friends that like reading books. They can like food and books. That's fine. But uh, with that said, though, on to the next and final thing. So number seven, and that is use deterrence. So besides just making sure that your books are dry and are in dry areas and all the other stuff that I outlined, there are other deterrents that you can do to keep your books safe from all the pests out there. So those things include chemicals and stuff like that. A lot of people swear by these different chemicals, but a lot of other people, they swear by really simple home remedy sort of stuff that you can do with your books. So some people say like, uh, like take some ground black pepper and put it along your bookshelf. Uh, bugs, animals, all that sort of stuff. They don't like ground black pepper. They th they think it's nasty. I guess they don't they don't understand how much it saves scrambled eggs. Like scrambled eggs on their own, nasty. Put some black black pepper on it nice but uh you can do black pepper cayenne pepper something that i have heard so many good things about uh if you guys ever have like an ant problem or a mouse problem where mice keep on getting into your house if you just surround your house with like cayenne pepper that stuff will stay for a little while until the first rainstorm at least and nothing will try to cross over that they hate that sort of stuff uh something that i did not see mentioned but i know works is diatomaceous earth so diatomaceous earth it sounds like a big dangerous world word but uh it basically is something called a diatom which is a tiny, tiny, tiny critter that died and got fossilized. And now you can take, they have this powder of it. If you go to the hardware store and act, ask for diatomaceous earth, they will give you a powder. And that powder you can sprinkle around stuff. And bugs, if they get in it, they will die because it actually like fills up their pores and they can't breathe because they breathe through their pores and they die. That is something you can sprinkle along your bookshelves. It's not necessarily the prettiest thing. I would say black pepper is probably the prettiest of all these things that you could do if you wanted to do it. But honestly, I don't, I personally don't use deterrence like that uh, for my books. I use it for other things, but I don't use it on my books because I do not have that issue because of the, all the other things that I do, especially monitoring my humidity. I don't have any issues with my books. And in addition to the humidity thing, I don't have food around my books as well. So those are the two things that I personally do is no food and low humidity. That does very well for me. Um, of course, you can do anything off this list of seven things. I'm just going to go through that list one more time for you guys. So first one is uh, keep your books off the floor. Second one is don't put your infected books with all your non-infected books. Three is keep your books uh, and air dry. Again, guys, that's probably the most important, I would say. I think it personally is, but I would say 
keeping your books off the floor is also pretty important. Uh, but number four is get rid of or clean or monitor your damaged books. You don't want stuff to spread. Uh, number five is monitor your books always, like your non-damaged books. And number six is keep food away from your books. And number seven is use deterrence to keep stuff away from your books that you don't want with your books. So with that said and done though, guys, thanks for watching. I hope to like I hope to keep all your books safe because I hate seeing damaged books. It's something that just gives me such a sinking feeling, especially when I see some of these books are ones that I love or ones that are really valuable and seeing them just torn apart because they were mistreated. Uh, I actually have a video, I'm going to be linking to it right there, about how you should properly store antique books or just books in general. And uh, again, you can check out the playlist right there of the entire thing on bookworms that I am making the playlist for because there's a lot of information about bookworms that might be nice to have and you actually should know as well for some of these things as well. So with that said and done, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.